than any of the other tribes of the world. So it's Absolutely. not my people. It's yeah. our people as in general. Well, this is our planet. Yes. We all have to live here. We're all, we all have to live in peace and do things together to get anywhere, right? An organism at war with itself cannot survive. And government has invaded every daily aspect of our lives and gotten us to all hate one another and want to, you know, you know, fuck them. They get things for free from the government and, you know, this, the whole nine yards. And it's like, well, no, actually, what we have to start thinking about is why are any of us putting up with government, period? Yes. Right? Yeah. I'm in and the what, what are they these- taking... What well, are they taking away from those people in order to give them status? Yeah, they're stealing from all of us. They're they're taking a hundred. They're taking your 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 heritage away from you in exchange for a hundred bucks. What's worth yeah. more to you, your heritage or the hundred bucks? And then they're saying here, um, TMFD is saying racism was created to divide, and this is something that we're all. I think we're all on the same page with. Um, being being a racist and segregating yourself to one certain class or or race or whatever the case is just a, a way to further divide us. We can't be looking at li- at it like that. That we are just all one together. Uh, you, you know, I think we all. Again, I, I try not to be a hypocrite. I think that everybody has the right to go do whatever they want, but we all have to work together. If somebody wanted to go, like if there was a native tribe in Canada that wanted to preserve their heritage and say, well, no, you know, if you want to live in our in our reserve. You have to marry within our own people and keep our customs and traditions alive so we can maintain our, our heritage. Why would I ever try right. to hold now, that against somebody? No, definitely. It's a difference between holding on to heritage and segregating for superiority, though, right? Well, there is no superiority. Well, that's the point, but a lot of people use the um, heritage thing as, as a superiority card. Yeah, I'm, no, not gonna make, I'm not going to put anybody into a box because if I do that, I'll be called a racist. There now, it go. says here, race is a defector in international law, a defector of the tribes. And this is something that I've been studying as, as far as there's a difference between white tribe and right, white race. White tribe was true to tribal treaties, whereas white race went against all of them. Um, I'm just touching on that because that's a com- that's a com- part of the conversation that's going on in the chat. It's such a busy world here, and again, <laughs> you guys are listening to. <laughs> I have Dean Clifford on the show. Uh, this is Carrie Lee, and you're listening to Lifting the Veil on www.freethinkradio.com. Um, and what do we have here? And the, the idea that we were different was a very implanted thing. Yeah, well, it's all about making us feel like we're separate, and we're not separate. And that's something oh. that we're trying to understand more and more and more is that we are all, it comes down to that we're all connected thing. And some people look at it as a kind of new agey way to look at it, but it's not because we're all brothers and sisters together. It doesn't matter if we're separated by continent or color it, or language. That's just not the point. No. Um there's not, yeah. I mean, I'm even a big fan of preserving uh, cultural heritage, uh, race, whatever you want to call it. Because if if we don't, then there's going to be there there is not going to be all these different wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, heritage. You know, different. Uh, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, ethnicities out there. Yeah. Why destroy? Why destroy yeah, all well, that? That doesn't exactly. mean we all can't we work together. Exactly. We should be understanding and, it. Yeah. There you go. It's, and that's even a moot point. To everything's going on here. The whole point is, is all these. All these things are going on, all this confusion and all this, all these things are being started by the government so that we're, we're all busy, you know, uh, concentrating on all these other problems. We're not, we're not concentrating on the fact that they're actually stealing our, our birthright. They're stealing from yeah, us. Yeah, no, that, and, that's, from us. And, and this is the whole point of today's conversation with Dean together so that we understand that we have the power individually and that we need to take the power back. Yep. And I just have rage in my head now completely. Um, but anyway, Get so with that, yeah, this is the thing. We have to be angry. We have to turn around and say, fuck you. I'm not going to do what you tell me. I'm not going to let you put me into a box. I'm not going to let you rate me of my, my hard-earned cash that I don't want to be wrapped to in the first place. Um, we have to start living together for each other and basically back away from the beast and this is one of the best, most comprehensive ways that that I have found yet. I've been on the sovereign search for over a year trying to figure out anything that I that would bring me closer to it without understanding what it all came down to. And and we have something here for you. So I you know, I I was lucky enough to get Dean on the show. Dean, thank you again. It's not the end of the show, but I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you so much for taking the time because he's a busy guy. He's running a construction business that he can 
barely make the time for because this, what we're talking about today, is just that much more important. Yeah, I would not feel bad if I had to walk away from my construction career for the rest of my life to do something that I know is right anyway, so. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Now, I have um, someone saying, Outpost 5 says, Dean has discussed defining words. Can you speak to syntax where a word appears in a sentence can determine its meaning? Uh, wow, say it again. Okay, Dean has discussed defining words. Can he speak to syntax? where a word appears in a sentence can determine its meaning. Its intent, its meaning. Well, that, that, that is another, another fundamental uh, cornerstone of law, is what was the intent of the law. So absolutely, uh, failing a definition, because you don't... Um, and I, don't, I hate to even use statutes, because statutes aren't law anyways. They're only a law if you agree to be governed by them. They're not law. Um, you get into maxims of law or like human rights or, or even contract law, right? Like what was the intent of what was being written? What, what were they really trying to say, especially taking the context of, of the, the, the conditions uh, back when the law was written, like the writing of the Declaration of Independence and that kind of stuff, right? So you better believe the intent is, is very important when you're trying to de decipher a law. But um, then definitions of words, I mean, everybody knows the famous Bill Clinton thing. I mean, he got off on all, everything that, that he did by asking what definition of is they were using. Right. What definition it is. It, it, that depends on what definition of is you're referring to. Right? Well, there's, I think there's like 29 different definitions for the word is. That's a loophole. I don't believe in that. I think that's, that's nonsense. But, uh, yeah, intent is very important. But it doesn't matter. The... Um, Oh, boy, I could go off in a million different directions with this, but uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, somebody, I have somebody another question here, I, I shouldn't have to answer anybody as long as there has been no harm. Exactly. What's your standing in this matter if someone's making a claim against you? How have you been injured? Oh, his original question is, though, why should I have to participate by jumping through the hoops of the system if it's already my birthright? Yes. Oh, absolutely. You, you supersede... Um, God, I, I want to think of the proper way to say that. Um... The problem is, 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 okay, you guys created this, this estate when you were born, right? And then you did nothing with it. It's kind of been without a captain for the last 30 years. So the government just kind of takes it and starts piloting themselves and starting to steal all the equity that's in your estate. That's kind of technically what's going on. You never actually stood up and say, oh, hey, whoa, wait a minute. You know, who, who are you driving? No, no, th this is my estate. Why are you meddling in my affairs? Well, you've never done it. Oh, yeah, you know what? You got a good point there. Okay, well, I'm going to do it from now on. How does that sound? And by the way, here's, here's the terms of our business relationship if you want to have one with me. But that's not the claim being made in court. The claim being made in court is that you were operating as a public servant and you broke the rules while you were doing it. And the rules are the Criminal Code of Canada. That's the obligations a public servant has to follow when he's on duty. That's why you're in court if the government's coming after you. So that's easy right. to address at that point. So so basically, you're going to jump through some hoops so that they don't take advantage of you because there is going to there there's a good possibility it's going to come a time where they're going to try to. So you need to know your rights. So it's not about jumping hoops, but taking the defense. Um, no, taking the offense. Or sorry, the offense. I didn't uh, yeah. mean defense. Yeah, we we used to take the defense. You never win a defensive battle, right? They just keep coming back. We I, I know people that can that can go into court and they can argue statutes like you would not believe. They know statutes better than any lawyer out there, and they go in there. And they argue everything properly, and they get the judge on lies, and they just dismantle everything that's going on in there uh, on a defensive ground by arguing their own statutes. The only problem is what happens uh, when you argue with Caesar in Caesar's court. I mean, he Indeed. wins no matter what. He'll just change the rules, right? It's Caesar's court. Right, yeah. So when you start to fight no. offensively, you start to raise the arguments about, well, wait a minute. No, no, no. Whose court is this? Oh, this is a public courthouse? Wouldn't that make it my court? So I guess I'm Caesar here. So I'm going to be the one administrating. I'm going to be the one dictating what is administered against my person and what is not administered against my person. Are you claiming anything to the contrary? Well, that's usually when all hell breaks loose, because you're right. Well, yeah, you know, you, you know when you're pissing them off. Because, oh, yeah, well, um, yeah, you know when you're right. That's when sheriffs get called. Yeah, now someone else is asking, so when am I on duty? <laughs> well... What's the best way to know that you worked a shift at McDonald's? When you get your paycheck? 
When you get your when paycheck. When the day's over. When you get your paycheck. <laughs> do you normally get paid when you work? Yeah. When was I paid? And that's great. How many hours did I work that day? Because I charge a million dollars an hour, so I need to know how much of a bill to send to the government. By the way, what function of government are you claiming I performed? And where's the contract? Well, guess what? If you didn't ask any of these questions before you went to court, then you deserve to be beaten when you got there. You were given every opportunity to settle the matter before you went to court. That's why you have to wait. You're, when you show up for court the first time, you're given full disclosure. I never make any arguments until I've received full disclosure because I want them to testify against themselves as much as humanly possible first because that's your entire civil claim against them wrapped up in a little package they hand deliver to you. It's wondrous. It starts being a great thing once you understand what's going on. Well, and that and that's the idea is that we all have to understand what's going on. And as I keep saying, uh, this is the comprehensive way to start. Dean's fantastic in that he's, I, I, <laughs> you've kind of been brought to us here to say, hey, look at what I got. Look at what I studied. And I don't give a shit. And I don't care what they do. I, and, and that's something that I admire. You don't care. You don't care what they think. You don't care about what they think they're going to do. It's not, it's not because you know you're in the right, and you know your rights. You know the, the legislation, and it's not that hard to figure out. No. Nope, it's really not it's that hard. It's just where you're looking. Ask the right questions. Exactly. Unfortunately, the system is not equal. That's one of the reasons I'm doing what I'm doing. If everybody was on a level playing field, um, things would be a lot different, but we're not. Uh, when we walk into summary convictions court, which we're being forced to go into... Uh, the, the, it's 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 a it's a roulette game. Everything is is in their favor. Everything because we don't know what's going on. So that's not really fair. I don't like that. So I think it's my job to actually help people understand who they are when they're walking into court. So at least they got a fair hearing, a fair chance, right? Right. And what the other thing people have to realize is they have to. Um, I mean, one of the reasons I, I walked out of court there last year was because. And I think I speak about this on the one of the videos. We now realize that even even the uh, the transcripts from the court hearing are not a matter of public record. These these court hearings don't actually happen. There's no record of them actually happening because people are not doing things like swearing out affidavits and entering that into the court file, right? Right, right. That's one of the things I did. Is every day after court, I had three days of court in a row. I'd go home that night. I swore out an affidavit of everything that happened in that court that day, and I had it filed back into the court record the next day before court. And that's why by the end of the third day, the judge is like all nervous and scratching her head and doesn't know what the hell to do because now I've made it a matter of public record. Your crimes are now on the record. You can't keep this private anymore. I didn't even know what I was doing right. at the time, but it worked because it pissed me off. Yeah. I, that, that, that's a story I never finished earlier, but when I got arrested for contempt of court the one time, and they brought me back up an hour later and this and that, and the next time I came to court, I said, oh yeah, like last time when I asked you that question you th and you, th you, you arrested me for contempt of court and threw me in the basement for an hour? Mr. Clifford, I don't see anything, I don't see any mention of that on the record. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that happened. And that was when I went, oh, you fuckers. I know what's going on now. You ignore everything because technically it didn't happen if you don't if 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 you don't want to see it unless I force you to see what happened. So when we go to court, how many people are, are actually bringing up the fact that well I was actually you know when I pulled over the side of the road or whatever I was forced to sign this document. One of the things I tell people to do now is to circle their signature on a recognizance and write right on there in red marker. I didn't sign this willingly. I was told to sign it or I'd be beaten. And then fax that back into the courthouse with instructions to put that in the court file. Do they really have a contract with you now? Can they prove it? Is it? Do they? Can no, they ignore no. that now? No, they can't. You're putting the fraud right in their face. Okay. Now, um, explain. Okay, people have asked me about uh, health cards and stuff like that because a health card is government issued property. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, say that one more time, sorry. Um, <laughs> health cards being governmental property, uh, go government-issued property. What do you say to the whole health card situation? Well, what I can say is one of the things I say in uh, the other videos there is that I can make all the presumptions I want about what's really going on behind the scenes. But uh, usually government is kind of like one of those black boxes. It's a machine where it's got an input and an output. And the only way you can find out what's going on is by doing something on the input to see what comes out the other end. And as far as I can see, um, 
I don't think you need to fear a health card because uh, if you're an investor,